So we left off on taxes and efficiency, and that's where we'll pick up. So we know that taxes drives a wedge between the buying and selling price, and that results in an inefficient underproduction. Now, the price that the buyers pay is also the buyer's willingness to pay, and this measures the marginal social benefit. And the price that sellers receive is also the seller's minimum supply price, and this measures the marginal social cost. Now, we know that with no tax, the marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost, and that results in an efficient market. The total surplus, which is the consumer plus producer surplus in this case, is maximized. So, taking this graph into consideration, uh, this green part, the consumer surplus, will go all the way to 200, and the producer surplus will go all the way to 200 and we won't have this empty area that I'll fill in later to use as, an, as another example. So what tax does is tax decreases the quantity and it raises the buyer's price and lowers the seller's price. And tax also makes the marginal social benefit exceed the marginal social cost and that shrinks the producer and consumer surplus and, that's create, and that creates a deadweight loss. And we know that our dead weight loss is really this little triangle, and that's where I'll put it. And I'll label this as our dead weight loss. That would be our consumer surplus, and this would be our producer surplus. And that again is highly inefficient. And the tax component isn't really a social cost of production. It is the the transfer of resources to government. And tax revenue takes part of the total surplus, which is the consumer surplus, plus the producer surplus. And I'll fill that in right now in this red, as this red part right here. So let's just, well, that's still gray. So that's this red part right here. This is our tax revenue. Let's just label that as black. So that is our tax revenue, and our tax the tax revenue takes a part of the total surplus, so the consumers, the consumer surplus and the producer surplus, and a part of it also becomes the dead weight loss. Now, in extreme cases of perfectly inelastic demand or perfectly inelastic supply. The taxes doesn't change the quantity bought and sold, so no deadweight loss arises. Now we'll end with taxes and fairness because we always do fairness. When political leaders debate tax issues, it is fairness, not incidence and efficiency that gets most attention. Economists have proposed two conflicting principles of fairness to apply to a tax system and one is the benefits principle and the second one is the ability to pay principle. Now the benefits principle is the proposition that people should pay taxes equal to the benefits they receive from services provided by the government and it is a fair arrangement that those who benefit most pay the most taxes. Now, the ability to pay principle is the proposition that people should pay taxes according to how easily they can bear the burden of the tax. Now, we know that a rich person can more easily bear the burden than a poor person can. So, in this perspective, the ability to pay principle can reinforce the benefits principle to justify the high rates of income tax on high incomes. And that is where I'll leave us off at. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about production subsidies and quotas. So right now we just finished with taxes. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.